right, so hello everyone. I'm Lars Jacques Maiton. I'm a principal software engineer here at Sigma Labs, and uh, today we'll be doing a brief introduction to a PrintWrite 3D data set, showing the differences in the metrics, details of data interpretation, and setting up and using the anomaly detector. Uh, the data set I'm presenting today is a collaboration with the University of uh, Nebraska-Lincoln, and it uh, represents a uh, geometry that's uh, representative of typical additive manufacturing. It's a uh, impeller. Uh, this data set will also be published uh, in the Journal of Additive Manufacturing uh, sometime later this year, 2021. And uh, yeah, the paper goes into more details about the modeling side of this geometry. Um, so to start with, uh, this is the main data view. Um, what we're seeing here is a cross-section of the four impellers. Um, as you can see uh, from bottom left to top right, uh, we have these four. And uh, we embedded intentionally several defects to show the utility of the system, uh, what things the system sensitive to, and then what the different metrics tell you about the parts. Um, what we're seeing first is our TEP metric, uh, thermal energy plank. And what this represents is the measured black body temperature of the process and also sort of how the process responds to uh, the input energy and the uh, existing geometries. Uh, because what I'm showing you is the first layer, uh, there's sort of some unique signatures we see here. Uh, in this case, uh, we can actually see the machining marks of the part uh, or of the plate rather. Um, what happens on these first layers is the uh, powder layer is bonded to the plate. And depending on how the plate was flattened, uh, wire EDM, or uh, whether it's machined, uh, you might see some evidence of this. And this also sort of shows the fidelity of the system. Um, to sort of prove this to you, uh, you'll see as we play through the first couple layers, uh, the machining marks gradually dissipate and the uh, process stabilizes in temperature. Um, other things we can see in the TEP metric, um, there is a intentional defect within the lens of the system here. That's what you're seeing here. This is uh, the effect of the optic strain uh, delaminating, essentially. Um, you can also see various other effects here. Um, variation in gas flow uh, is part of why you're seeing some differences part to part. Um, you're also seeing the effects of the scanning strategy. Uh, to introduce the other metrics, uh, in addition to TEP or TEP, we also have TED, which is our energy density metric. Um, this is a good representative metric for what type of energy was put into the process. Um, it's a lot generally cleaner than TEP because it's not capturing all of the dynamics of how the uh, energy is captured by the uh, material. And what you can see already is that this part, uh, the bottom left, was scanned with different parameters in general than the other parts. Uh, to show you some other things uh, about TEP, um, we can run uh, some pre-built anomaly detectors. So uh, we have upper and lower thresholds for what sort of temperatures we're expecting. And pulling up those analysis, we'll already see some activity on the first layer. Uh, in this case, the analysis I'm going to pull up is called TEP overheating. And uh, what you see on the first layer uh, through our anomaly detector on the top right is it's already found something. Uh, to briefly introduce the layout of the uh, uh, metrics and, and the uh, software, um, we have the uh, histogram on the top. This represents the total sum of the metric data uh, and then also how they're colored. Um, what it's showing is basically you have this range of temperatures, um, the lower range of the temperatures is dark black, the highest range is this white, things in the middle are this red, and you can see in general there's more of the average temperatures than there are the extremes. Um, this is reflected in the anomaly detector uh, because it's looking for very high anomalies uh, or high temperatures, um, which it's defining as anomalies. You can see that the region that's uniquely isolated is the highest temperature in the part, and uh, likely this is due to some sort of delamination. Um, this type of thing can occur on the first layers of the part. And it's generally important to point out because if this delamination grows layer to layer, it can be a catastrophic part failure. And uh, generally it's worth uh, alerting the system to this uh, earlier. Um, in this case, uh, you can actually see from the summary on the bottom, uh, which basically describes whether a layer contained an anomaly or not. 
that the first three layers have this anomaly, but by the fourth layer, uh, the anomaly disappears. So to show you that layer by layer, you can see this first anomaly um, has a, a persistence uh, on the second layer. But looking at the quantitative assessment, you can see it's decreasing in total area. So it's going from 1.9 square millimeters to 1.1 to even smaller to eventually it starts disappearing. Um, that is a sort of representative anomaly from our TEP metric. Uh, we have also have a similar uh, anomaly analysis on our TED that detects uh, very different type of anomalies. To pull one of those up, we have our extreme high TED. Um, you'll see actually for this layer, uh, there's not uh, that many anomalies uh, as represented by the summary on the bottom. But you'll see going into higher layers, there's uh, some anomalies higher up. In this case, uh, it switches to the TED metric, and we can see instead of just one anomaly per that first layer on this layer 54, we actually have 24 anomalies, and it's actually ordered them. Uh, looking at the summary on the right, um, the list of anomalies, we can see they're actually all very small, and they're all uh, spherical. Uh, clicking on any of these anomalies will take us directly to them within the part. And you can see that uh, we've intentionally in, implanted these four anomalies uh, on the bottom right section and another four on the top left of extreme high uh, GED. Uh, so it's showing up in our uh, metric. And uh, you can also see that they weren't implanted for the nominal part. Um, following the uh, anomaly detector on the bottom, you can see that these are actually spherical anomalies. So um, the anomaly size will actually start small and then um, increase over time uh, to a maximum and then actually decrease as they uh, go away. So this is a representative analysis of our TED metric uh, for extreme high TED values. Um, to, show you, to show you sort of uh, how we would use this live, um, in addition to all of our, you know, uh, already ran analysis, you can set up a new one at any time. In this case, we have uh, our live analysis window on the top left. Um, you simply just pick a metric and you define it uh, to uh, detect the uh, things that are of interest. In this case, we have extreme low TED values. Um, to show you sort of what this would look like from our detector, you drag the anomaly range to represent uh, the anomalies that you're seeing. So in this case, nominal data is you know around 400, but our extreme low GED is around you know uh, 86, something like that. So if we just set our anomaly range from let's say one to 100, um, we'll be able to see uniquely these values and run analysis that'll find these. So that's a uh, example of the live analysis for TED. Once you have this alert, um, you can actually use this going forward. So every time you find an anomaly, it's, it's really an investment that you can uh, uh, use later on in the uh, builds that you set up. So in this case, I was demoing um, our TEP overheating, extreme low TED, extreme high TED. Whenever you set up a build, uh, you automatically have these available to you. So um, in the same way uh, that these build were ran and it automatically got these analyses, uh, you can set this up for any new build. So you set up the build name, you define its material, and then you're given uh, for any new build uh, a set of conditions that you could automatically look for. So in this case, you can select for high TP, low TD, um, you know, whatever sort of metrics are relevant uh, and that you'd like to be alerted to. Uh, another thing that's worth pointing out is we can actually um, contact you optionally if this alert is worth uh, stopping the production. So in this case, we have this alerts to email section. And basically, as soon as a live data detects these conditions, uh, it'll send out an alert and uh, notify you directly uh, on whatever sort of device you have uh, to take action and what action you should take. Another thing to show is um, all of the analyses I've been showing um, has a statistical view. So not only can you view it within the software, within the data, within the context, but you can actually look at it statistically. 
So um, this is our charting app. Um, you can access it from the main page in the same way uh, you would the Viz app. Um, so the Viz app is this tool on the left. It's called Visualize. Uh, on the right, we have this IPQM statistics. Uh, clicking on that takes us to this charting app. Um, and basically, we can very uh, quickly aggregate data uh, per part and then uh, see a summarized view of it. So in this case, we have our parts, one, two, three, four. Um, for reference, this part four is nominal. You know, the parts uh, have uh, anomalies. Looking at just our, for example, our TED metric, we can see, you know, compared to uh, part uh, four versus one, part four uh, doesn't have these implanted anomalies. Uh, part one does. Uh, you can see through the upper and lower percentiles of the metrics, there's extreme deviations in the metrics, uh, which correspond to those implanted spheres I was demonstrating. Um, and to show this in a different way, uh, we can actually do an anomaly chart just on uh, the anomaly we set up. So in this case, if we're looking for uh, our extreme high TED, uh, we can see that for part four, uh, there was no extreme high DD for the entire part, but for part one, there was uh, for the layers corresponding to the spherical defects. Uh, we provide a lot of flexibility in uh, the charting options and, and what type of chart you can see. In this case, this is the count of the anomalies uh, that are connected in Z uh, to show you know a very different view. You can actually uh, turn off the Z connectivity and then also uh, show, for example, the uh, uh, ratio of the area as opposed to the number of counts of anomalies. Um, all very different views, all very different useful. In this case, you could show the area of the uh, anomaly boundaries. Um, you could show it to the uh, uh, count. And, and the, what this shows is that actually, while these anomalies were present throughout this entire defect region, uh, they're actually growing and shrinking to, to sh show you some different views of looking at the same data. Um, in this case, uh, so to just sort of summarize, um, I've showed you the different data sets. I've showed you the different metrics. Um, we've done a little bit of data interpretation, and we've set up and used the live anomaly detector. So um, thank you, everyone, for uh, giving me your time and uh, letting me go through this representative data set uh, for PrintWrite. And uh, yeah, thanks, everyone.